Well, hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today, uh, this happened. It is a pleasant Sunday stuff and things, but it's also a snow day. And that being the case, I thought I would get out and enjoy a little bit of the landscape. I know most of the country is experiencing a lot of snow and cold temperatures, and we got a little bit here in Bellingham, Washington. Um, all last week it was very cold but dry, and then there's always that chance that when the coldness overlaps with the wetness, you're gonna get the snow. And they said that we weren't supposed to, but then I woke up this morning, looked out the window, and here we are. So I thought I would go to the park and try to record, but it would seem that a lot of other people had the exact same idea. <laughs> Everyone's walking around in their little winter wonderland. Um, snow is rare enough here. I mean, it usually snows a couple times a year. We had a little bit around Christmas, but it didn't stick around long. But if it snows like this, people freak out. They all get on their little cross-country skis, snowshoes, and things like that, and they come and try to enjoy it. I'm trying to see how my camera does out here with auto ISO. With all the white snow, it doesn't like trying to expose the scene very well. We'll see what happens. I'm also gonna see if I can find a spot where I can sit and talk to you guys and have kind of a normal Sunday stuff and things, even though the circumstances aren't completely normal. But there are quite a few people around. There is a bench. And maybe I can brush it off and take a seat and we'll do our typical normal Sunday stuff and things. All right, I've brushed some snow off a bench. It's uh, probably around 25 degrees Fahrenheit at the moment. Quite a bit of snow and quite a bit more snow coming, but we have many things to talk about. I have notes here. I also have your questions and feedback in hashtag ask stuff and things. We will be talking about these stuffs and things in this Sunday stuff and things. Number one, we're gonna talk about upcoming videos a little bit. We are going to talk a little bit about our good friend Rory at Put That In Your Pipe And Smoke It, or Put That In Your Pipe And Smoke It, as his channel is actually called. Um, gonna talk about someone who I really, really enjoyed following and who tragically passed away recently. We'll also talk about gross food that I love, and we're gonna get into some feedback on last week's videos, the political compass test that I took, and also the uh, photographing crows video. And then we'll touch a little bit on the Super Bowl and then we'll wrap it all up with your questions and hashtag ask stuff and things. The snow has slowed down a little bit. This will be a good opportunity to see how weatherproof this camera actually is. Okay, upcoming videos. Number one, we are continuing with our Hitman 2 series on Stuff and Things Plays. I've gotten some good feedback on the initial videos that I posted on that, and that's good because I've already recorded quite a few. I think I've got 16, 17, 18 episodes or something like that. So those are gonna be coming in the coming weeks, coming in the coming weeks, and then after that we shall see. Maybe we'll start a whole new series. I'm thinking of maybe doing Dark Souls 2, perhaps. We've got dogs running around. Hello. Hi. I thought I recognized my friend's dog, Charlie, but I don't think he's out here right now. So yeah, maybe Dark Souls 2 or something like that. I'd like to do another From game. I would love to have a PlayStation 5 so I could do the Demon Souls remake, but I don't, no, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. They're still completely unavailable, and I can't really afford it right now anyway. So we shall see. And then the video that we'll be posting on Stuff and Things this Wednesday I believe, I haven't recorded it yet, because I haven't been able to get into Stuff and Things Studios, uh, which is why we are here in the snow. Um, but I think it's going to be a video about my Dunhill pipes. I have several Dunhill pipes, and the dogs are freaking out here. 
I have several Dunhill pipes and we're gonna see about taking a look at all of them, a little bit about their history, the years they were made, and why I like them, and whether or not they're actually really good pipes or not. Um, so those are the videos coming up on the two channels. Next, I want to remind you that you should check out a very good YouTube channel with my good friend Rory. It is Put That In Your Pipe And Smoke It. And I will put a link in the description box below to a, a video that he just did with an interview with me, actually. He sent me a series of questions and I recorded some responses. It was a fun video to do. I enjoyed um, recording that for him and answering those questions. <laughs> One thing that was kind of funny, I watched it back and I realized that I recorded it at 24 frames a second, and I think his timeline was probably 30 frames a second, so my voice is a little higher than it probably should be. Um, so in the future, I'm gonna have to rem remember to check with whoever it is or whomever it is that I'm you know, doing a video for to make sure I do it in the proper frame rate for them. But regardless, the video is very fun. Rory is a really cool guy, and you should definitely check out the channel. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Hopefully I'm doing justice to his amazing accent. Um, but yeah, I will put a link in the description box below for that video, and you should definitely check it out. Ugh, I need to get me a dog. Um, next, and this is kind of a sad interlude, I guess. There is a podcast that I've been listening to for, God, seven, eight years now, I think. I'm not exactly sure, but it is called the Around the NFL Podcast, and it's the only sports-related podcast that I listen to, the only one that I've ever really listened to. The only sport that I ever follow at all is football, and I'm not a super fan. I just happen to like the Seahawks. But even if this, the podcast, the Around the NFL Podcast, had nothing to do with sports, I would still enjoy listening to it because the guys on there, sometimes I get comments from people telling me how they feel as though they know me or they feel as though I'm a friend of theirs. And I can totally understand what people mean by that when I think about the reasons I like the Around the NFL podcast. There are four guys, or they were four guys, who are all friends and the conversations they have are just so just easy and... It's like you're just sitting around with a, with a few guys in a bar over drinks discussing things, and it happens to be that they're often discussing footballs, football, but they get into their normal lives as well, and their families and the things they like to do. And recently, um, actually it was the Friday right before the Super Bowl, one of the members of that podcast died, and that was Chris Wessling. And he is someone who I have always just felt a real connection to, even though I didn't know him at all, I listened to his work on the podcast. I, was read, I would read his articles on NFL.com. He always reminded me of a really old friend I have, someone I've known since kindergarten. And there was just something about his personality. He was a really interesting guy, just seemed like a really lovely person. And a couple years ago, he was initially diagnosed with cancer and he went through cancer treatment he had just met like this lovely woman who he had become engaged to, and he had this really just heart-wrenching struggle with cancer, and he beat it. And I remember just following along the entire time when he was on the podcast, when he couldn't be on the podcast because he was too sick or in too much pain, and it just seemed so fantastic that he had beaten this, and he had a son right after that, and everything seemed to be going so great, and then just this last year, throughout this last football season, the cancer came back and it seemed worse this time. It seemed like he was less able to be on the podcast, less able to engage with the other guys. And, you know, I'd been kind of worried about it the entire time throughout this entire football season. And then after the Super Bowl, I didn't watch the Super Bowl, but I was going to listen to their podcast, kind of hear um, their breakdown about the Super Bowl. And I just saw that they had posted a video or posted a audio podcast that just was called Chris or just Chris, or just Wes, I think, because they always call him Wes. And my heart just sank. And I listened to the podcast, and he had died on the Friday before the Super Bowl. And he leaves behind a wonderful wife and an infant son, and a lot of people who just considered him one of the best people in the world. And it was really sad. I actually felt like I had lost a friend. 
which, you know, there are a lot of people I follow, um, you know, people who do YouTube videos, people who do podcasts. There aren't very many people like that that I can think of where I really did feel as though there was a relationship, even though I'd never spoke to him. And so I just wanted to acknowledge that he was a really great guy and he will be missed. Chris Wesseling. Getting mildly worried about how wet this camera is getting. It's supposedly weather sealed. It can do like a light rain for a while. I just hope it's going to be okay. We shall see. Um, next, I recently I, I went to the store. Luckily, I went to the store yesterday. I go to the store every weekend, pick up the week shopping. Um, luckily, I went yesterday uh, because today I probably wouldn't have gotten been able to get there because none of the streets have been plowed or anything. But I happened to cross something in one of the food aisles called Easy Cheese. And it is a can of cheese that you squirt onto things. It's like cheese in sort of liquid form. And by all definitions, it is gross. But I love it. And it's not something I've had in years. I think the last time I had it was when I was like in my early 20s. I was dating someone who at the time also had a strange love for Easy Cheese. But if you get some um, wheat thins and some easy cheese. You spray them on there, you chomp them down. It's disgusting, but it's delicious, and I love it. I would never make a habit out of eating easy cheese on Triscuits, or not on Triscuits, on wheat thins, but I bought some just because I wanted to show my fiance and make her eat one. I did make her eat one, and she said it was disgusting, but it just put me in mind of other foods that I know are gross, but either through nostalgia or because of habit or whatever, I just end up liking them. I'm getting a lot of stuff on the screen here. I might need to wipe this off. I don't know if that's better or worse. So number one, easy cheese. That's one of those foods. Another one I was thinking of is the weird like instant potatoes you can make they're just like flakes in a box and you mix them up with water and maybe a little bit of milk again they're gross but i love them and again i almost never have them it's been again probably decades since i've had them or over a decade since i've had them but i think i could enjoy them i think next time i go to the store i'm going to pick up a box of potatoes and try them out so i'm just curious to know if you guys have anything you could put in the comments below Foods that you know are gross, but foods that you actually enjoy in spite of the fact that they're horribly unhealthy, or not even horribly unhealthy, because there's lots of food that's really good that's not good for you, but food that is objectively gross, I guess just in the idea of it or the way it's made, but you still really enjoy it. I'd be curious. All right, we got some feedback on last week's videos. I posted, instead of the normal Sunday stuff and things last Sunday, I posted a video where I took the political compass test, which, you know, is mostly just for fun, just for a laugh. I don't expect it to be a very, very accurate reading of my political beliefs, but it was something that I wanted to post to prompt a little bit of discussion. And also my main point in, po in posting that video was to say, hey, if you watch my channel, you probably like me. And if you like me, you may not, or you may assume that I agree with you politically about things because for some reason lately, our society seems to say you can only like somebody with whom you agree politically. And I just wanted to point out like, look, these are some of the things I believe. You may not agree with me, but you may be able to still think of me as a good guy or someone who you like and vice versa. I can, I can disagree with people politically, but I still might like them as a person. So I posted that video and I got a lot of good feedback from it. Um, I should have known that I would because you guys are all great people for the most part. <laughs> Occasionally a troll will slip in, but I really got some good comments that I wanted to read um, as responses to that political compass video. There are so many people around. It's really testing my ability to not feel like a maniac while talking to a camera, but we're going to continue on. Um, I got one response from AA on YouTube. AA said, your answers were very consistent with mine. I assume I'd be around the same area on the compass. Extremes in pretty much anything have the potential for neg negative consequences. There's almost always too much of a good or bad thing. It's ironic because most people do probably fall somewhere near the middle of the compass, but it's the extreme viewpoints that receive all the attention. That is probably true. And thanks for the comment. 
Next from Dorian Philotheates, or Philotheates. Hmm, interesting test. As a longtime fan of this channel, I had an inkling that politically Bradley was a sane, rational, balanced, democratic moderate with classical liberal leanings. Hmm, maybe. So I'm pleased that my general impression has been confirmed. I always thought that my own political views lay several leagues to the right of Ivan the Terrible. But it turns out that I'm an ethnocentric New Deal Democrat with anarcho-commie sympathies. So it's been fun to actually get a lot of responses from people where they talked about their own um, results from taking the test. And then we have a response from TP, who has been subscribed for three years. Very nice. TP says, very interesting. Normally I'd say this was a pretty daring video, but I think members of the YTPC are respectful. I find myself more socially liberal, but fiscally conservative. People nowadays get offended over everything, anything and everything, and we have gone intolerant. I don't know why we can't listen better to each other's ideas, but I feel we feel we a closer, I feel we are closer as in ideology as a nation than we think. And I think that's probably the case too. And that's basically just what I want to foster. I want to foster people being able to speak to each other without getting angry at each other. And I think that the response we got to that video really was a good example of how that is possible. And then I got a few responses on the crow video. A lot of people saying that they want to see more of those kinds of videos. So we'll see. I do want to try to track down the river otters and the sea otters and any other kind of fun wildlife stuff we can do around here. So stay tuned. I really don't know what's going on with the ISO on this right now. Hopefully it looks okay. It's really hard to see the screen at the moment because everything is streaked with water. Anyway, I said I would briefly touch on the Super Bowl. I mentioned that I didn't watch it live. I typically don't unless my team's in it, and my team has only been in it once uh, since I've been really paying attention to football. So I usually just watch the highlights after, but I do have to say I was actually quite pleased that Tampa Bay won and also quite pleased that they just trounced the Kansas City Chiefs. I know a lot of people seem to get annoyed when someone consistently does well, and I don't know where that comes from. Actually, I guess I could see where that comes from. People who, do, who feel insecure about their own place in life, maybe. They want to rip down people who have succeeded and achieved things. Or they just hate the Patriots and hate Tom Brady because they kept beating their team over and over again. And I can completely understand that. And even though the Patriots beat the Seahawks in a Super Bowl, a heartbreaking Super Bowl. Oh yeah, the Seahawks have been to the Super Bowl twice since I've been paying attention. Um, back to back years. Even though the Patriots beat them, <clears throat> I don't have any ill will towards Tom Brady. And I just think it's amazing that he has won seven Super Bowls. And he went from the New England Patriots, and the very next year on a brand new team, they were able to go to the Super Bowl. Obviously, he didn't do it himself. Their defense was amazing, and the offensive line for the Chiefs was just in tatters, and Patrick Mahomes was just running around the entire game, never was able to get comfortable in the pocket. But, uh, yeah. I was very pleased that Tom Brady won, as pleased as I can be that a team won the Super Bowl that wasn't the team that I follow. But I'm looking forward to next year. I, there are some kind of creepy rumbles that Russell Wilson wants out of Seattle. We'll see what happens. I mean, I can't imagine that Seattle would ever let him get away, but I don't know. We'll see what goes on in the off season, and maybe every once in a while we'll have another football update. All right, gang, it is time for hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like it answered on a Sunday Stuff and Things, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, and I will do my best to answer you. Also, you can leave comments on YouTube videos or messages on Patreon. I try to gather uh, questions from all sorts of different sources, but here we go. We have some questions first from Twitter. This is from Paul Denny at Paul De Bruni. Have you tried HUTs? Beans 316 is astonished at the quality and being Virginia-based teas, I thought they might be worth trying if you can get them from Germany. The 80s child also pipe vlog from from Germany? Uh, not sure exactly what that last part was, but HUTs. Um, I have heard of them and I have never seen them offered on US-based websites. So I don't know if it is possible to get them in, in here, and I don't know if it would be possible to import them. But uh, I will definitely keep my eyes open and see if I can get a hand, a hand or two hands on a tin of one of those blends. Uh, next from Ryan McFadden. Hello, Ryan. At Ryan McFadden. Ryan says, I hope you're doing well, man. I am. Thank you. 
I've been looking at getting a good pair of leather boots as of late. I was curious how your Alden 405s have held up. Do you have any recommendations for good boots for someone new to the hobby? Hashtag ask stuff and things. Um, you know, I was gonna do a video recently, kind of an update on my Alden indie boots because I just had them rehealed and I was gonna talk about that process, but I haven't actually gotten around to doing that. They're great. They look amazing. They feel amazing. They're my favorite pair of shoes. I've had them for years now. I don't wear them a ton because during the week I'm wearing boots like this, like muck boots most of the time. Um, but I wear them, I don't know, several times a week. And the only thing I've had to do to them is replay, replace the heels because the heels were starting to wear down. And I didn't want to get it to the point where it was wearing down the sole. So I actually sent them to a place that specialized in Alden repairs because they had the proper, um, what are they called? Foot balance heels? I can't remember exactly what the brand is that Alden uses. They're like the, the rubber heel they use. They have a leather sole, but then a rubber heel on this particular boot. And uh, yeah, sent those away, got that replaced. And other than that, they've been absolutely great. No cracks or anything. I tried to take good care of them. So maybe we'll do an update video on those soon, but they are definitely a very high quality boot and I would certainly recommend them. They are kind of pricey, but they're really good. Okay, next we have a question from Amir Zalahara. This was via YouTube. Amir says, Hi Bradley, thanks for all the informative reviews. I'm an amateur, and recently I've discovered that aromatic teas are not my type, so now I'm fascinated about trying Virginias and Vapors. Could you please recommend some Virginias, some Vapors, and some English simple teas to start with? I'd heartily appreciate it. I'm going to say the same thing. I'm like a broken record. But if you want a good Virginia, you could try Gawith Pure Virginia, or Gawith Full Virginia Flake. You could try for a Vapor. Um, I would recommend uh, Elizabethan, obviously. You could also try out Orlet Golden Sliced is kind of a mix between a Pure Virginia and a Vapor. Um, simple English blend would be Peterson Standard. And then um, I still love Peterson Nightcap too. You could try that. But then anyone else below in the comments, let uh, Amir know if you have some other suggestions for him. Some kind of basic, simple starter, Virginias, Englishes, Vapors, things like that. And we're back. I briefly got put in the middle of a crossfire of a snowball fight, but uh, we have one more question we need to get to here. This one is from Teddy uh, via YouTube, and Teddy says, isn't it time for you to work on a mixture, Bradley? Get hold of a few good ounces of pure Perique, Cavendish, Latakia, Turkish, Oriental, etc., along with good Virginia leaf. I would suggest a cut press leaf or at least a good Virginia flake. Weigh up the mixes if you like and keep records. I have a feeling you'll be able to create something perfect for you. It would, it would make some great videos too. This has been suggested several times in the past and I've kind of experimented with that a little bit. I had some pure Perique, I had some um, red Virginias and things like that. And I can like, mix some stuff in a bowl, I guess, and maybe pack it away. It might work, but I always tend to think, you know, leave it to the experts. And that's not to say that you should never try to do this, but I just think with my life, the busyness of my life, and also the fact that I have very little room in my life or in my living situation, there are so many amazing blends out there that I love that I'm more than happy to just buy those <laughs> and smoke them. Um, but yeah, we may do that eventually. That's something that I've considered in the past and maybe we'll get to that. So thanks for the question or the suggestion. Gang, I think that's it for uh, hashtag ask stuff and things. But now before my camera like freezes over and d decides to die, I think it's time for the very best part of the show. And that is where we thank you, the Patreon supporters. If you would like to support the channel on Patreon or the channels on Patreon, there is a link in the description box below. Many videos that we post on YouTube cannot be monetized. This one probably should be. But any ones that have anything to do with like the pipe hobby are usually demonetized. And if you want to support more videos like the ones that you enjoy, you can support us on... Man, it is a little cold. I'm having some trouble. You can support us on Patreon. There's a link in the description box below that is much appreciated. But you don't have to do that. Just having you watching, having you comment, asking questions, that is super helpful and super appreciated. But those who do support on Patreon at $25 or more a month get a special shout out, and I would like to thank them. People like Ryan McFadden, Kirk Crompton, Private Eye, Glenn, Gus, Jason Buckner, Jen Oside, John Leone, Christian Kovacs, 
Joshua Jackson, Gloria Phillips, MD of the North. And then I would also like to thank the Maniacs, the crazy people who support the channels at $100 a month. People like Peter Straub, Bob McGee, and David Gautreaux. Thank you all so much. I'm getting completely covered in snow now. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this little bit change of pace. I know we've had a few changes of pace recently, um, but I should be back in the Stuff and Things studios next week, I think. Um, I'll keep you posted on that. Here's my Domkey camera bag, by the way, which is not really waterproof, but is getting completely covered in snow. Hopefully that's okay. But I think it's about time I put this camera away. I don't want to press my luck too much. Like I said, it is supposed to be weather sealed, but it is freezing cold and there's a lot of snow. So until next time, until we meet again, I've been a good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a pleasant Sunday. Stuff and Things. I'll see you later.